Okay, everybody, welcome back. I do hope that you had a minute to breathe and do a little bit of self care after that exciting, like the momentum around that discussion was fantastic. Uh, but remember to take care of yourselves too. We have more content. So we hate to we hate to wrap that part of the discussion, but there is so much awesome stuff to come that we don't want to miss. Let's get to it. We are here. This is rightly so many people's favorite part of the historically of the Agile Women in Agile Conference, and it is one of my favorites as well. The Launching New Voices program, which we talked about a bit in the earlier segment, is a very concrete, very lovely, organized, structured way that we are supporting the entry of new speakers into the Agile community. And there's a lot of gatekeeping that goes on in this community. So there's a lot of, you know, well, what's your speaker history look like? And do you have any videos? And have you spoken on a national stage before? And we give speakers each year an opportunity who didn't have it before to come back and say, yes, I have. Here it is. So I'm going to hand this off to Amelia, who has been the chair, but before, wait, before I do that, quick reminder of our conference and organizational code of conduct. Remember that our code of conduct exists primarily to create safer and more inclusive spaces for us who normally cannot expect a feeling of safety or inclusion in the other big dominated tech conferences and other spaces that we participate in. We know we've got a lot of work to do, but this is our commitment to trying and to doing the work. Um, and it is much more about what you need to feel supported. Please do reach out to us um, with those things as they arise, whether it's during the conference or after. We do have folks monitoring the WIA Conference Help Channel. So if you have an issue that needs to be addressed immediately, let us know. After the conference, don't hesitate to reach out to the Women in Agile Org through the contact email. And remember that when you participate in our events, you say, you agree that you read and signed it. It's on the WEA website. Now I get to do a cool thing. I get to hand off to Amelia to introduce us to the amazing Women in Agile, launching new voices, speak, mentors and speakers. And Amelia, thank you so much for all the work that you have done in organizing this incredible effort. We appreciate it so much. Yay. Thank you. So welcome to Launching New Voices. Um, we really believe that new voices power our diversity as a community. And with this program, we really seek to lower those barriers to entry so that we can start amplifying and empowering all of the wonderful voices within our community. Um, after the talks, we'll tell you a little bit more about how to get involved. Um, and I've been taking down names of the folks um, who've mentioned it so far. So with no further ado, I wanna introduce you to the folks that really made this happen today. The first is our program team, led by our amazing chair, Jenny Tarwater. Um, Joanna is our executive sponsor. Um, and Aaron Dottie and Faye are my fellow team members. So we started working on this back in January. Um, and we had our new voices apply and then we recruited four folks who have really been the power of helping these new voices today and that's Paul, Aaron, Carrie, and Allison each of whom mentored one of our wonderful speakers and from our program team we have a wonderful woman who is one of the new voices that we had launched Aaron Dottie do you want to introduce our talks for today? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Emilia, and thank you so much to all of you here. This is just a remarkable community. Um, I was one of the launching new voices protégés last year, and I know it was a life-changing event for me. So I am super, super excited to introduce all of you to our wonderful protégés for this year's launching new voices. Um, and they are Brittany Morris, Minakshi Ayer, and Toby Naji. So I want to go ahead and um, ask Paul Tevis, who has been the mentor for Brittany, 
to go ahead and introduce her. So hi, everybody. Um, I am Paul Tevis, and it is my pleasure and my honor to be with you here today, particularly given all the conversations we've been having about allyship and mentorship and sponsorship. And it is my further pleasure and honor to introduce you all to Brittany Morris. So Brittany holds a Bachelor of Science in MIS and Management and an MBA, both from UMass Lowell. She is currently a Senior Technology Analyst at Accenture based in Boston. Brittany loves to travel so much that it's in her job description, which makes the restrictions on travel right now particularly hard for her. So to make up for this, she's learning Korean so that she can more appropriately appreciate one of her favorite guilty pleasures, which is binge watching K-dramas. Uh, when it comes to brownies, Brittany lands firmly on the fudgy side of the fudgy versus cakey debate. And I promise you that last piece of information is relevant to her talk here today. So please welcome to the virtual stage, the first of our new voices this year, Brittany Morris. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Thank you for the wonderful introduction there. So as Paul just alluded to, I'm going to tell you guys a story about brownies today. So sit back, get comfy, and just listen. It's Sunday, no heavy stuff. Not from me. <laughs> All right, so it was my first Scrum Master gig. I was working with a data analytics team. I was fresh out of college, green as anything, but ready to make an impact somewhere. And you know, I was lying in bed after work one night. I got my, uh, my old lady doggo curled up at my feet. And I was just thinking to myself, hmm, how could I boost my team's morale? They've been pretty down recently. See, my team was awesome. They were new to the Scrum framework, but they were kicking butt and taking names. Our stakeholders were also pretty awesome, but maybe a little too good. They were super involved in the demo and very, very curious. As a result of their curiosity, they would ask the team to pivot to yet another question they had to satiate their curiosity, more and more data insights. And I don't know if you guys know any data analytics people, but my data analytics people, they love to dig into their data. And to pivot away from a data set iteration to iteration, the way the stakeholders wanted, meant that they only got to graze that top layer of data there, um, you know, before having to switch to another data set. And telling them that they had to pivot like that instead of digging in the way that they would, would have liked to was like telling your dog to get out of the mud and come inside and take a bath, basically. They just wanted to dig a little deeper, roll around in it, maybe see what it tastes like, I don't know. But be themselves is, is the point that I'm getting at. This is a job that they loved, but it had started to become unfulfilling to the point where one of my team members came to me, not even during a retro, this was outside of a retro, and he said, Brittany, not slowing down, sprinting the way that we're sprinting feels like finals week. And as a, as a fresh college grad, this, this resonated with me strongly. I, I, know, I knew I had to help them somehow. They couldn't continue this way. They just couldn't. Um, so I was on my way into work the next morning. It was a, it was a nice rainy train ride. I love those. Um, and I remembered it was one of my team members' birthdays. And I was like, oh, oh crap. I love, <laughs> I love doing things for people's birthdays. I know as you get older, they're kind of less important, but I'm happy that everyone's here every year that they can be here. So, meh. Anywho, so there I was, got off the train, put my hood up, shoved my curls into my hood. You folks with curly hair know what I'm talking about. And as gracefully as possible, I ran across the street in heels to the supermarket to go get some brownies for my team. So I actually learned a lot from that, uh, that store purchase of just brownies, mostly that my team had a disturbingly large sweet tooth, but the team enjoyed the brownies so much that I also had the pleasure of learning that somebody on my team was in fact a baker. And he had the courage to ask, seeing, you know, how the team was enjoying their, 
their brownies if he could, in fact, bring in some of his own confectionery goods. And they were a huge hit. My goodness, this guy with his with his baked goods. Oh, I, I words cannot express how good these were. <laughs> Anywho, this became a regular thing. Uh, my team started to become known as the team room that has all the all the food in it. Uh, so much so that one of the senior managers on the account came in with some baked goods from a bakery near where she lived. And I always think it's great when you can get higher level people on the account into whatever shenanigans you're up to. It's, it's just fun. <laughs> Anywho, I was sitting there one day just watching my team munch on some, uh, some orange zest muffins or some kind of goodness like that. It was, oh, I miss them. <laughs> Anywho, I noticed these brownies, those, you know, maybe bi-weekly sweet treats for the team. They had Marie kondo my team. They sparked joy in my team. They became something that the team could look forward to and a means by which they could celebrate their small wins, whether that be, huh, that line of code was pretty good. I'm gonna reward myself. Or we killed it at the sprint demo. Cheers. <laughs> Anywho, when I took a step back to file away this wonderful, successful moment in my, my very short career, <laughs> because this was probably only about three months in or so, um, but hey, I thought I was killing it, so. <laughs> um, I started to draw a parallel between how my team was sprinting and how I was living. I'm a very goal-oriented person. I would live for the next milestone, but so much so that I couldn't even enjoy it when I got there because each milestone was always in the shadow of the next milestone. And that, as you can imagine, was very unhealthy. <laughs> and it, it took watching my team go through something similar to give context for what not celebrating each milestone and what waiting for each milestone was doing to me mentally. I was sprinting through my own personal and continuous finals week. And that was just no good for Brittany, no good. <laughs> and that, that realization led me to learn how to celebrate with my team. And in my mind as a scrum master and I feel a general, generally decent human being, I owe them a healthy work life. I'm supposed to be their advocate, you know? Not just a yay, we did it at the end of a at the end of an iteration. So, you know, I started doing little things here and there. Everything from stickers for finishing a story to a vibrant and dare I say funky uh, neon scrum board. <laughs> and the team uh, they liked these changes. Not all of them, but you know, some of them. Um, and they started to you know, collaborate on stories, trying to get them done faster. They started having knowledge transfer sessions. And of course, they kept snacking. <laughs> Although it wasn't a perfect solution, they still, you know, they still had to pivot the way the stakeholders wanted them to, but it paid off. They managed to give themselves some extra breathing room towards the tail end of the sprint. That's when the actual analysis took place. So they could really spend a bit more time chewing on the data towards the tail end of the sprint. And although they couldn't continue iteration over iteration, digging into that, you know, that data set, just having that extra little bit of time towards the tail end of the sprint really made a difference. All of a sudden, work had become a bit more fulfilling for them. So never, under number, ugh, never underestimate the impact that brownies can have on your team. I am firmly convinced that if they were cakey brownies, it never would have worked. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed my story. I encourage you guys to try to do the same thing, maybe in different ways, you know, make it special, unique to your team, unique to you. And um, I'll leave you with three things. How can your teams sprint healthily iteration to iteration? How can you sprint healthily through life milestone to milestone? And in doing so, how can you and your team grow between the gaps 
and learn between impacts. Thanks. Thank you so much, Brittany. Thank you, Brittany. That was amazing. <laughs>